Fulham Everton. I mean, Everton have been off the boil. Yeah. Um, you know, after a stunning start to the season. And um, I don't know what to make of, of that team right now, Shakes. What are your thoughts? <clears throat> Look, I mean, I think the plus side for Everton is that a lot of their players are going to be coming back. Some from suspension, some from injury as well. So you will finally get to see Richarlison and Dominic Clavard Lewin start a game, finally again. Um, so I, it, it's, it's, it, the Everton team is probably getting back to full strength. And that is what Colin Torotti has missed. I mean, there's, there's been games that uh, Ham has missed and there's games Richarlison missed through suspension and stuff. So... He gets almost his full squad back, and I think I'm going to go Everton 3-1 against Fulham. Yeah, I think what's a trend that's kind of becoming evident in the same way that there were a lot of goals in the opening four or five rounds is if you look to like the last few rounds of the Premier League and international football, we've been seeing a lot of nil-nil draws. Mm. Um, and I see this game being one that is nil-nil until sort of like 78 minutes or something, but Everton are just that little bit better to pull through one goal. So I'm, I'm going to go 1-0 to Everton. I don't think they've done enough recently to justify more goals than that. I mean, Fulham aren't great, but, you know, yeah, I'm not sure. Guys returning, haven't played together for a while, and just the nature of those sort of, like, 0-0 slogs, I think it's going to be 1-0 to Everton. Yeah, that's not a bad call. Eh? I, I do think Everton will sneak a win here, but I don't think it'll be convincing. Um, so I, I'm going to go with one nothing as well for Everton. Um, probably the, 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 the worst game of, uh, on, on the schedule, uh, Sheffield United versus West Ham. No, no way. This is the best game. I mean, Oli McBurney versus, versus uh, Mikel Antonio. I mean, this is what we've been waiting for. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's... Um, but you love football, Shakes. I, I, I like football, um, but I could never sit yeah. through an, uh, 90 minutes of that game. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so, I mean, I look at this game and I'm thinking to myself, um, West Ham, if you ever wanted three points to be gifted to you, this is the game for me because Sheffield United are losing confidence. They're not getting any wins as well. As well. They lost five games only drew one and lost the rest of them. They got battered by Chelsea. I think West Ham United, if they ever wanted a gift of three points, no offense to Sheffield, I think West Ham goes in here. And I'm going to say West Ham to win this game 2-1. Once again, seems like I'm just copying shakes. But uh, I was tempted to go a draw, but I just think, I think Sheffield United are just too bad to actually draw. So... If not a one all, I think it's it's going to be two one to West Ham. Well, I don't think that the audience, whatever audience we have, is is um, you know surprised by you copying shakes. You're a millennial. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm the youngest, so I'm allowed to actually just piggyback off your guys' success. That's what we do. But I, I'm gonna <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but I'm gonna say Sheffield United one, West Ham uh, one. I, I I got a feel. I mean, Sheffield United have been atrocious this year. Um, that have a hard time scoring any goals, uh, while while West Ham on the other hand have, has impressed and had some decent victories. You know, I thought that they would be really struggling this year. Um, I'm going to say one-one uh, Sheffield West Ham. Shakes, Leeds United versus Arsenal. Now, I knew you were going to rub your hands, my friend. Woo! This is the one. Um... You know, it's funny, I, I would no disrespect to Leeds, but how in the world is Arsenal's odds 2.16? I mean... I mean because you can't score goals and you lost to Aston Villa 3-0, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we did lose to, to Aston Villa 3-1, but it's nothing compared to conceding eight goals in the last two games. I think we beat Aston Villa 4-1 or something, didn't we? Like, I, don't, I don't know. It's a six, yeah. six. When we played Aston Villa, I think we hammered them 3-0. Indeed. So, on those logic, if we beat Aston Villa 3-0, they beat you 3-0, we should beat you by 6. Well, well look, I mean, good luck with that. <laughs> good, good luck with that, because uh, I see something very different that's going to be happening in, in today's game, for sure. Uh, I actually, because um, it's happening at Ellen Road and not 
and not at the Emirates Stadium. I think Arsenal perform better when they are on the road. Um, recently, they've beaten United away. Anyone beats Fulham, yes, but they've beaten Fulham by three goals. So I'm going to go with, I think Arteta comes back with the win on this one. I think Arsenal 3-1. Sure. Um, look, I'm going to be backing Arsenal too. I don't think they're going to score three goals. Um, I see it being a 2-1. The reason being that even though Arsenal have dropped a few a few games, um, there's a very clear like structure and plan. I actually wrote a piece for Soccer Club on this and on Arteta's sort of um, there's a clear identity to his team, and that's you know the way that they are attacking is they're not afraid to knock it around in their own quarter. They're trying to draw defenders in, um, and they you know then playing it up the top and trying to get it through to Obama Yang to finish. If you look at Leeds, they do play a high press, you know, and I think they have the potential to get sucked in there and for Arsenal to potentially, you know, get one or two breakaway goals like that through just drawing them in at the back and sending it over the top. Um, so, yeah, I, I like Arsenal 2-1. I think they need to, they need to um, bounce back from that Aston Villa game. And, yeah, Leeds are looking on a little bit of a downward spiral, as unfortunate as it, as it is to see. So, 2-1 Arsenal, that's my call. Yeah, Leeds have you know started off well and 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 struggling lately. Um, very unbielsa like of them. Mm. Um, my only problem with Arsenal is uh, yeah, I get what you're saying about the structure and, and Arteta, but they've only scored nine goals this year, and that's just not good enough. Yeah. Um, I think Leeds, on the other hand, have scored fourteen. Unfortunately, they've, they've given up seventeen. Um, so if Arsenal have a game to, to get going, it's against a team that, that leaks many goals, like Leeds. Yeah. But I, I I just don't see them having another bad performance. To, you know, I, I see this as a, another draw, 2-2, okay. um, cool. and hope that Leeds get a point. And, um, yeah, I hope Leeds get a point, and, but I just don't see them. I don't see Arsenal winning with, 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 with the yeah. play. One of my criticisms about um, uh, Arteta is his... Is his, is his management of substitutes. He's got some good talent on that bench, and he always seems reluctant to take anybody off. I think, you know, uh, he, it's almost like he overplays his hand, and, and yeah. there's a reluctance to go to some really talented players on that bench. Mm, I, I agree, Kevin. I think he sometimes tends to overthink it, and he's overthinking it a lot um, that he showed. He's overthinking it a lot, and... I hope he's not trying to overdo it and try to be the messiah of football now and all that stuff. Like, just keep it simple. And if you have to go to substitute, go there much earlier than you usually do. Yeah, I agree with that, Shakes. So we're all in agreement. Lead six, Arsenal nil. <laughs> you haven't given your score, though. Oh, you said uh, two, two, two all. Two yeah, all. two all. Yeah, okay. Okay. Two, two. Next, one's a, next one, a game is, again, a great game to watch. Um, Liverpool versus Leicester. Let's yeah, this is. I mean, like, it's very tempting to you know anytime you get like a one point nine three on Liverpool, who for some reason just never seem to get the respect that they you know as mm. as reigning champions and you know very close second place the year before, they still just don't seem to get given like the historical odds that Man United get given every weekend despite losing every weekend and, and yeah, that Man City get yeah. given every weekend Liverpool just don't seem to get that same backing I understand they've got a few injuries this year so 1.93 is definitely tempting against the side that less against the side like Leicester that can put through like put you know in a good run and then just kind of randomly drop a drop a game mm. my only concern is that you know, Liverpool really have been unfortunate with injuries. Like, Van Dijk's still out. A lot of their defence is still out. Um, Mo Salah's now not playing because he's got COVID. On the other hand, though, we saw that when they almost overplayed like a strike force and they had Bobby Firmino, Mo Salah, they had Diego Jota starting as well, Jota looked lost between the two of them. He didn't look like he didn't know whether his role was to create or to finish. And in turn, he wasn't finding the net, but he also wasn't finding Salah in terms of creating stuff. So... Mm. What this does create potentially is Jota to come in, um, Mane to take the lead in terms of the strikers um, and for Liverpool to actually put something together, you know. So, yeah, I like, I like Liverpool too much in this one and I've got it back, you know, the team I support. Um, I think it's going to be 2-1 to Liverpool. Okay. Shane? That was, uh, yeah, no, I, 
the, the things that are all of a sudden that I deal with them and stuff. But I must say, you look at this list of the injuries that Liverpool have or, or the players that are unavailable. Henderson, potentially out with a knock. Mo Salah, out because he tested positive. Joe Gomez, out with an injury. Trent Alexander-Arnold might not play because he's injured. Van Dijk, obviously out. And Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, out. And Leicester is a team that's won four of their last five away games. And you're thinking to yourself that if ever Leicester wanted a good day or a good, I don't know, odds that favor them in terms of to go to Anfield and get a win, it's right now. And I think if they're trying to prove that they are part of the title race or something, hmm. they have to win at this one. But Liverpool, on the other hand, at Anfield, there's, there's something else. Never mind when they play at every other ground, but when they're at Anfield, there's something else, regardless of the injuries that they have. And Unfortunately, I've got bad news for Leicester fans. I think Liverpool are going to even make it look easy. Mm. I think I think Liverpool are going to put Leicester in their place a little bit. And I think I see Liverpool winning this one 3-0. Nice. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this this is a hard game to predict. It really is. I mean, Leicester have, have, have been impressive for most of the season. Um but so is Liverpool. I mean, you know, they're, 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 Klopp is such a beautiful manager, uh, such a beautiful mind, you know. Um, and I, I, beautiful beard too. Oh yeah, yeah. As as a Leeds fan, I, I you know, I, I love Klopp. Um, I just don't know in this game. It's like, um, and when in doubt, I'm going to go with a draw. Uh, I I see it being a one-one game, and. Uh, you know, I think with all the injuries Liverpool are carrying and stuff like that, they won't see that as a, as a terrible result. Obviously, they'll want to win, but yeah. I'm going to go 1-1 for, for Liverpool-Leicester. Which brings us to our next game. What a letdown. Burnley versus <laughs> Crystal Palace. Do you want to start this one, Kev? Yeah, I don't care. Um, I see good value in Crystal Palace in the way that they're playing at 2.81. Mm. So, you know, from a predictive point of view, this has got draw written all over it as well. But from a value proposition, I like Crystal Palace if I had to put them in, a, in, in an accumulator or something um, like that. Uh, so I'm going to go uh, nil-nil game. Paint drying boring. Yeah, look, it's... I mean, I, I can see it, but I can definitely see it being one of those nil-nil type games. But I just got to look at the fact that you know, Crystal Palace, they've been struggling recently, but you do feel like they're on the edge of something every time they play. Burnley, on the other hand, on 19... On yeah, the Burnley, Bur- Burnley are on the edge of a abyss. Yeah, and Crystal Palace are, are sitting at that number, on number eight, I think, you know, looking to potentially break into, into the top six if things go their way and don't go the way of the top six sides at the moment. So, you know, I, th- I think this, this, is a, this is a game that, you know, Crystal Palace really could win and, and need to win. Um, so, I, yeah, I like them in terms of a bet, like you're saying, at 2.81. Ollie, Crystal Palace have as much chance of breaking into the top six as I do breaking into Heidi Klum's bedroom. <laughs> it's n- <laughs> Plenty of things have happened. <laughs> um, I like 1-0 Crystal Palace. Yeah, uh, this is a tough... This, uh, actually, I find this a lot harder to predict than what um, the, Liverpool and, the Liverpool and Leicester game would be because... With this one, it's kind of tricky. You're not really sure what's going to happen. I mean, like, like you know the, the line that they say, at some point the team has to win. It's not like Burnley or Sheffield or West Brom are going to go all season without a win. I mean, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible, but I, I don't think it happens. And I think, look, I don't want to say Burnley is going to win. It's going to be Crystal Palace. But like Kevin said, I think there's a draw written all over it. So... I will probably would say this is going to be a nil-nil draw. Yeah, and I won't be watching this game. Uh, Wolverhampton. This is not a bad game, actually. Wolverhampton versus Southampton. Um, Battle of the Hamptons. I actually I like the Saints in this one. They've they've been impressing me this season. I'm I like maybe a a two-one Southampton, and they're they they're valued at three points. 3.25, you know, which mm. potentially a little bit unfair considering their position on the log and their performances, you know. Shakes? Look, I mean, uh, Southampton have been in good form. They proved mm. that against Newcastle when they beat them 2-0 that, in fact, they can win games without any Ings mm. if needed. 
Um, I think he's still going to be out for this game. I'm not 100% sure. But I'm going to say Wolves is going to be their toughest opponent that they've had since the last three games. Mm. And I'm going to go with a Wolves win. And Wolves win this one 2-1. One. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Shakes, I like Wolves 2-1. They're a quality side, well coached, well organized, and um, look, Southampton have no doubt been impressive. But but Wolves are uh, their credentials are a bit stronger than Southampton, including last year's performance. So I'm I, I'm still going to stick with Wolves two one, same as you, and uh, we'll see what happens. We're all on thirty one correct predictions. We'll see what happens at the end of next week. Um, and thanks, guys, for coming in and, and and chatting about it. Of course, good luck, guys. Good luck, guys.